Hi, my name is Dr. Damien Lowry. I'm a senior counselling psychologist, a chartered member of the PSI. I've worked in hospital psychology for 15 years, private practice for seven, and I'm a master trainer in stress control. So I hope to talk briefly and practically and hopefully helpfully to the issue of stress management over the next couple of minutes. One of the first things I want to say is that I'm quite conscious of the fact that this is quite a stressful time for a lot of people. The pandemic COVID-19 situation is currently escalating and some of us are feeling the brunt of that distress uh, a lot more than others, although it's likely to affect all of us to some extent over the coming weeks and months. And the tips that I'm going to offer are fairly broadly and generally pitched. If you feel you require more tailored and personalized input, I would suggest you follow up with someone individually around that. When we're under stress, whether it's perceived or real, and in the current climate it's likely to be far more real than perceived, we react to that. Our bodies and minds react very strongly in many instances to that and we experience what is often described as a stress response um, and this activates an ancient biological mechanism in our brains uh, which in turn leads to activation of the musculoskeletal system quite strongly and also the autonomic nervous system which affects many many different parts of our bodies and indeed our minds. So our response to that needs to be multi-pronged. I want to speak to how we might respond to that. The first being how we control those symptoms at a bodily level. The second will be how we control uh, some of those experiences and symptoms at a cognitive or mental level. And thirdly, what we can actually do at a behavioral and action level. So firstly, controlling bodily symptoms, it's gonna sound patronizingly simple, but it's not as easy as it sounds. But the use, the skilled and effective use of our breathing mechanism is something that can really help us to anchor ourselves in the present moment. Our minds can bounce around the place a little bit. That can be helpful sometimes. That can be quite unhelpful, particularly in, in instances of distress when there's a lot going on. So the breath is actually quite a useful anchor to anchor us right now in the present moment. And it's also nature's break. So it slows down our autonomic arousal. It dampens it down. It slows our physiology down. It exerts effectively a break on our mental and our physiological activation. This happens over the course of a number of minutes. It does require a bit of persistence and patience. That can be the tricky part, but perseverance with it can usually confer some benefit. It's not the only component, but it is an, an, an essential part of what we might do for ourselves to help ourselves cope with stressful experiences. The second strand to the strategy really is going to be trying to retain as much control over your mental activity as is possible. So whilst it's important to remain informed of what's going on, I would really signal a lot of caution around excessively focusing on the updates, spending too much time tuning in to radio, TV, Twitter, whatever other social media feeds you might have at your disposal, and um, because it can run the risk of greatly feeding into and exacerbating whatever stress you already experience. So take time out from that gain attention control so that you deploy your attention where you want to be deploying it uh, uh, rather than it being kind of dragged all over the place or stuck on something that is going to feed into your distress. Distraction can be a helpful cognitive technique. It might sound simple again, it's hard to often execute effectively. Um, and just be wary of catastrophizing or imagining worst case scenario. And um, sometimes we might call that in a flippant kind of way, grasshopper thinking where we're jumping ahead Rather, it's important to control our attentional focus so that it's more present focused and it's attending to things that are within our control rather than things that are beyond our control. So finally, behavior. The good news about behavior is it's largely within our control. It's up to us how we feel, what we might think. It can be influenced by us and perhaps often influenced by what we do or how we cope with something, but it's not always firmly within our control. So. What we're really trying to do here is cope as adaptively as possible rather than coping maladaptively, which we all fall foul of from time to time. Careful how much you're leaning on alcohol if you are an alcohol drinker um, or if you have other vices, be wary of how much you're leaning on them to cope at, at, under the present circumstances. Rather, what we're trying to do is to 
Im increase and improve our ability to cope as adaptively as possible. That's linking in with loved ones. I know that's even more challenging at the time, uh, at the current moment, um, but we, we can still be innovative around that, whether it's through FaceTime, through Zoom, through other uh, online platforms, or even just a bog standard telephone and text. Um, also, uh, exercising, as, as limited as we are in that regard, we can still do that, maintaining sleep, hygiene practices. Um, I'm aware that these are really only scratching the surface. I hope they've been of some use and ultimately I would encourage all of you to frame what you're doing now as for the greater good. So that's another cognitive tactic that's really putting it all in perspective. What we're doing, even if we're telling ourselves to some extent that we're doing very little or nothing and feeling bored around that, even frustrated um, at times, what we're actually doing is for the greater good and it's really for all of our own benefit. We will get through this, it might take some time, um, but in the meantime take care of yourselves and each other, as Jerry Springer would say.